Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Hang on just a second, please. Okay, so recently I was on Facebook and it was actually on Jennifer Maker's page and I saw someone named Kelly had made these really cute coasters. And they were similar to ones I had made before and I'll show you them in just a second. Um, and there was a gal on there whose name was Shamika and she wasn't sure how to do it. She says she's new at using these things. So I told her I'd make a video, so here it is. So follow me down to my desktop first and I wanna show you some of the things I've done before. So if you look down here, hopefully you can see this without the terrible glare. Um, this is one of the coasters I made. This was one that I made just as a sample. I did not put a backing on this one as you may be able to see, maybe not, it's kind of hard to tell, but I did not put a backing on this one and you would need to in order to make these uh, work better. Uh, I would not, I use 651 vinyl, which means I don't need to seal this with anything and they work perfectly. So another thing that I made that I did put a backing on, however, is this. Made this for my um, grandbabies. Uh, let me open it. Let's see what side open. There we go. Whoopsie. Careful. So I have a video and I'll link that up above for making these as well as the other coasters and things that I have made. But these are tiles that you could also get like at um, Lowe's or that kind of place. And I made it to be a matching game for them. They could turn them over like this if they want to or just try to match them up because they're just two and a half and they could try to see if they know what the silhouettes are. So the thing I wanted to show you on this one though is that I did put a backing on this of felt and I cut the felt squares with my um, Cricut Explore Air 2. And I show you how to do that in the video that I am going to link up above. So you might want to check that out because it's easy. And then I just used my easy press to iron them onto here. And again, this is just 651 vinyl, which is permanent. So I'm not going to um, seal these with anything. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. Next time I go visit them, I'm gonna take them this little gift because I think they'll have fun messing with them. So, all right, now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my design on this piece of tile. I'm gonna pretend like it's a regular size one. I've actually run out of my tiles, so this is what I'm going to have to use. So the first thing you would do, of course, when you're ready to put this on your tile, I'm gonna kinda go backwards here a little bit. I'm gonna start putting this on the tile and then I'll go back and show you how I fixed this or made the design in um, silhouette. And of course, as you know, you can use the silhouette machine, not the silhouette machine, silhouette software regardless of what kind of machine you have. If you just have a Cricut Maker, you can use the software from Silhouette and it works perfectly. Now, can you hear that squeaky? That's how clean you want this to be. Squeaky, squeaky clean. No fingernails, nothing. And I want it to be totally dry. Ooh, that's harsh. All right. Now, as I said, I'm working backwards. So I already have my design and I'm ready to weed it. Now I did want to show you something. As I always recommend, I did do a test cut on my Cameo before I started. Uh, you can also do a test cut on Cricut machines and I've shown in some of my videos how to do that as well. And I also made a weeding box around here that makes it easier for me to weed and not have to worry about getting something that I don't want to. I noticed the hardest part for me is going to be, I think I lost the little dot for the um, question mark, but I can make one of those myself. So I'm just going to start weeding this and pulling it up. I have my pin pen, which I like to use for little delicate parts. I'm just going to get it started with that because I pretty much should be able to do this just like this. Got to make sure nothing's coming up that shouldn't be. Hello. Hello. 
There's the coffee or teapot, and you'll see that in a little bit. So that's pretty good so far. I haven't lost anything I need, other than I can see that I've lost the little dot right there, but I'll be able to cut one. Um, so now I'm just going to go back in here with my pin pen and pick out some of these parts. The font that I've used is a new one that I really like for the word hello, and it's called Shink, and I'll show you that, and how wonderful it is to use the glyph tool. Looks like I lost the apostrophe. There it is. Put that down. There we go. And as I said, I did lose the little dot with a question mark, and I don't know where it went. So I'll just cut one myself. But right now, I'll just weed these out. And again, this little pin pen is really helpful. You can do a whole bunch at one time like that. So here you go. Now you can see what it looks like. Hello. Is it, is it, and uh oh, there's a word in here and I'll show you that. Is it T you're looking for? Okay, I had a little hard time with the inside of the E here. I might have to put that back in. I <gasps> got it. It moved a little bit. Let me use my pin pen to move it back in this space where it goes. There we go. <gasps> okay. Hello. Is it T you're looking for? And that would go right on, fitting perfectly onto this little coaster right here, if I had another coaster. I don't have another coaster, so I'm just going to show you how I will go about putting it on this, pretending this is a coaster. <laughs> so hold on just a minute. Let me get my uh, transfer tape, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with my transfer tape. The tape that I have is really old. I, I'm, I always like to be really frugal if I can, so I'm hoping that this is going to pick up the vinyl and be sticky enough still. And I didn't bring over my squeegee, so I'm going to make do. Just use my fingernail. That's probably good enough. We'll know in a moment. So usually I like to turn this over and work from this side. That's coming up well. There we go. So here is my pretend coaster, which I have already washed with, and I like to use 91% alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. And I'm gonna put this over here, pretending it's just one coaster. Hello. There we go. I like to start in the center, just kind of work my way out to both sides. And again, I could be using my squeegee had I remembered to bring it over. But since I didn't, I will just use my nail again, unless I see something else over here. Don't really. Okay, now I'm just peeling this up at an angle. Sorry, you're probably seeing a horrible glare. All right, that turned out beautifully. The only thing, like I said, that I have to do is I have to cut 
a little um, uh, dot for the bottom of the question mark. Hopefully that's not too much glare for you to see it. Isn't that cute? That would be cute if it was totally just one coaster. And again, like I said, you must put something on the back of these because they're really rough and they'd scratch up any surface that you have. And I have a link up above, don't forget, for, and I'll have it below the video too if you need to, to show you how to cut this and how to adhere it to the back of the tiles. Again, I used uh, my Easy Press to do that. So I'll show you, you'll see that in that video. Okay, so now why don't you join me over by my computer and we will get started just briefly going through how I did this in Silhouette uh, Business Edition, whether it be for your Cricut machine, Scan and Cut, or your Cameo machine. So let's go over there. But first, oh, let me show you. Here's some of the ones that were on this website. Aren't they cute? wanted to give them credit because I didn't come up with this idea. They did. I'm just helping out by hoping to make a video to help. Okay, so let's look at my screen. Okay, here we are in the Silhouette software, and you can see this is the one that I made right here, and it's really easy to make. All I did was I got, and I actually got this from the Silhouette store, I got a um, silhouette of, um, of a teapot right here, right? Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do, and it has a weeding box around it right now. You see that blue box? So I'm going to get rid of that so it doesn't confuse us. You come on here automatically if you turn it on, uh, if you have the business edition. There we go. So the first thing I do is I have this teapot, and I already tilted it a little bit. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I want to put the word T in here, and I want to knock it out just like it was done on this. You see that's knocked right out of that black teapot. So back here, all I need to do is come over to the left-hand side where the tools are, get the text tool, and come over here, and I'm going to type in the word T, T-E-A. Okay. Now this is not the font I used. As I said, there's a new font that I really like and it's called uh, Shink. And I actually, when I made this one, I used um, Magnolia Sky for the word T, but I think I'll just use Shink for this and the word hello. So I'm gonna come over here now to the right-hand side to the text style panel and click on that. And I can see all of the text styles that I have. And Shink, by the way, is a free download from dafont.com. And since I've recently used it, it's right up here at the top, shank. So there it is, the word T. Uh, I'm not crazy about how it looks because that T is, or the letter T is awfully plain. I'm going to show you something fabulous about using this software. I'm going to right click on it and say ungroup. And now I'm going to take that T and get it out of here because I'm going to get a prettier one. So I'm going to come over here to the textile panel. Notice this one was highlighted. I'm going to highlight the second one in and it says glyphs. So when I highlight that and I have, well right now Arial is the font that's selected. I want to go back again and type in shink. So that's the one selected. And then that allows me to see all of the glyphs that are within the shink font. So I can just start scrolling down here, and you'll notice I start getting into some pretty fancier letters, right? I mean, I could end my word T with this swirly, but I want a capital T that's pretty. There's one that's prettier like that. I could use the lowercase one if I want to. Let's see, maybe I like that better. I think I'll actually use the lowercase one just because. <laughs> I'm going to try it anyway. So all I have to do is double click on it and it comes in right up here. And then obviously I have to click off and then click back on. I want to make it larger so it matches those other ones. Okay, I think I made it a little bit too big. Okay, I don't know. What do you think? Do you like that swirly this? I kind of like it. 
like I said, on this one, I had used the font um, Magnolia Sky, which is another free one from defont.com. That's what I used here. Hmm, let's see, what should I do? I think I will just use it like this. Uh, I might move the A over just a little bit closer like that. I wonder if I should change the A to the fancier A. Where is that? There's one A. It's not fancy. There's a little bit fancier A. Let's look and see if we would like that. So I can move this one out and just try this one to see what I think. Maybe this is getting a little too fancy. I don't know. It's all, you know, up to you, whatever you like. No, I think I like the other one better. I'm going to go back to this one. Okay, so I'm going to group these back together. Right click and group. And then what I need to do is I need to make them smaller. And I actually think I'll change their color so I can see them when I put them on top of the teapot more easily. So I go up here to the upper left and get a color. And notice this right here. Let me zoom in. You know what we need to do there, right? These letters, when they go to cut, are going to cut all the way around these pieces like that. So as usual, just like in Cricut Design Space, in most programs, we're just going to weld them. And that turns them into one piece then. So let's scroll back out a little bit. And I'm going to bring the word T on top and kind of fit it how I like it. Okay, that's cute. I like it like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this word out of the teapot. So I click on the word T to select it, hold down my shift key and select the teapot. Then all I'm going to do is come over here to the Modify panel. Looks like a rectangle and a circle. Click on that and then say Subtract. So notice, whoopsie. Notice what that did. It subtracted that stuff right out of there. It's exactly what we wanted, but when we moved that, you saw what happened. So I need to group this back together. And now I can delete this little T over here. And now this will move as one piece. Okay, let's zoom back out a little bit. The next thing that I did was this. I got a square right over here in the shape area. I drew out the square. And then I changed its size right up here. So it would be four and a half inches by four and a half inches. And that's exactly what my tile measures. measures. So I want to make sure that this is going to fit in there. So then I just drag the teapot in here and I resized it a bit. Then I decided to start working on my words. So I came over again to the left hand side to the text, clicked on my mat or anywhere actually, and typed in the word hello. All right. So I believe that one is still in shink, but I don't like that H at all. I wanted it prettier. So again, I can come over here to the text style panel and open that. And now if you'll notice right here, shink is still selected. So I can just go to the glyphs. And these are all the glyphs that are available to me in this font alone. If you have Samantha font, you can do the same thing. So I'm going to go down here and find the capital H. So there's the lowercase. E, F, G, H. There it is. And I'll just double click on it. And it brought it right in. Whoops, but I messed up. Let me control Z that for a sec. There we go. The reason why that did that was because I had this whole thing selected and when I double clicked on this it just changed this word for the thing I just double clicked on. So I need to click off of that and now get the H by double clicking on it. There we go. That's what I want. Bring it over and get rid of this one. First I have to right click and ungroup 
Now I can get rid of this H and bring in this prettier one and resize it. And I can actually make these letters touch if I want to so that they all cut as one. It's not that important since we're using vinyl. So let's group it back together. And I'm going to change its size a bit and bring it over to see how I like it. It's a little too big. Hello. Hello. The whole time I was making this, I was kind of singing the song to myself. Hello. Hello. And then there's supposed to be three dots. I forgot to do the dots. So since I've already changed this, it's no longer text. So I'll just come over to the text tool, come over here, and just type in dot, dot, dot. Oops, not commas. Dot, dot, dot. So there they are. And I can just move them right up here. Hello. And then I also had it say, is it? And I did, is it? I think in Arial. Let me get rid of these two. Let's come over here to the text tool again. Going to type in the words with all caps, is it. Now notice that's still in shink. So I'm going to come over here to the text style panel. And I'm going to change it to Arial. And I think what I actually did was made it Arial and I made it bold. Whoopsie. Not italicized, just bold like that. And then I resized it so it would fit nicely. Hello, is it? Okay, hello, is it? And then T, and I might have liked that better the way I have it on this one with it kind of tilted upwards, but I didn't do it on this one, but that's okay. So, hello, is it T you're looking for? you're looking for. And again, I have it in all caps. And again, it's in shink still, and I can tell that because I'm familiar with that. So I'm going to go back way up here with this bar, and I'm going to go to frequently used or recently used, and there's Arial. And I'm going to change it to bold again. And I need to, oh, I forgot my question mark. I better put that in here now. Question mark. Now notice it went on the next line and I don't want that. All I have to do is get this bar on the right and pull it out a little bit. And it should, there we go. And it should pop right back up there where it's supposed to be. All right. But I wonder if I want it closer. Yeah, I like it like that better. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off and then click back on because I'm just going to resize this so it will fit nicely. Still too big. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Hello, is it T you're looking for? So that's pretty much it. That's what I did on this first one. And you can adjust it, use whatever font you like. Here it is. Now, if you are using um, a Cameo machine, I'll show you how I finished this up. I actually made two of them at once. You can do that or not, but let's just uh, group all of this together first. And I'm going to make sure it's going to fit nicely on my tile that I have. It looks pretty good. Okay, so the next thing I did was I came over here because I wanted a weeding box around it. And since I have the business edition, I can put those on automatically. I come down here to where this little fly out triangle is. And this uh, box right here with the letter A and B in it and the dotted lines, that is the weeding box or weed settings. So I can bring over that panel. Right now you'll notice the weed lines are off. I'm going to turn them on and I'm going to make them be horizontal and vertical. <coughs> so that's going to cut little lines around my shape there to help me not waste vinyl. The other thing I do like to do sometimes is I change my weeding box settings, the padding, and it is still set to what I had it before. Sometimes I like it to 0 0.25. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to close that. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to send. And I think I will highlight this and say cut. Okay, so I'm going to use my ratchet blade and I'm going to use Oracal 651. I did do a test cut first as I showed you and I believe I had to change my blade from a three to or a two to maybe a four. I don't exactly recall. But as long as you do a test cut first on yours, you'll know whether that setting will work before you go ahead and mess any vinyl up or ruin anything, waste anything. So that's all there is to it. And then as you saw in the beginning, I weeded it and I adhered it to this piece of tile that I have. And I think it turned out super cute. So I hope you can see that pretty well. Like I said, I still have to do one more little dot for the uh, question mark, but otherwise it's good to go. Now, since I'm not gonna use this really as a coaster, and by the way, the, there aren't any bubbles in this. It turned out really nice. Uh, I might wanna hurry up and get this off of here before it adheres overnight, because once it adheres, it's gonna be stuck on there for good, and I don't really want it on here since it doesn't really fill up the whole surface. I was just doing this for a demo. So I hope it helps. I hope you liked watching this. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and comment down below. I'm still trying to get to 20,000 subscribers, so I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. Also, join us in our Facebook group. We have a lot of, I have a couple different groups over there, and you can see the links for them down below. I hope you join us. Thanks again. Bye-bye.